The dingo is a canine endemic to Australia. They're live apex predators and belong to the Canis genus, the same family that has wolves, foxes, coyotes and dogs. But they didn't evolve in Australia. So where did they come from and when? And how closely are they related to dogs? Before we can understand where and when dingoes originally came from, we need to know a bit about how the Australian and Southeast Asian region looked around 18,000 years ago. Back then, Australia and New Guinea were joined in a landmass called Sahul, while much of Southeast Asia was joined into a landmass called Sunda. Using DNA, it's been shown that the dingo's ancestors probably first originated in Sunda. Dingoes share some DNA with dogs and with wolves. This means that the dingo's ancestors could have been a result of early domestic dogs and wolves interbreeding. It's hard to say exactly how long ago this happened though. Scientific studies rely on the mutation rate of DNA to estimate how long ago something happened. For example, I can put a cup of ice on the bench and leave the room. I know the ice will melt, but I don't know exactly how long it'll take to change into water. I can guess it'll take a few hours, but without knowing the exact temperature of the room, I'm not 100% sure. It's the same with dingo DNA. We know it changes slowly over time, so we can estimate how long ago something happened by looking at how much the DNA has changed, but we're not 100% sure how fast it changes. The dingo's ancestors spread through Sunda, modern day Southeast Asia, to get from Sunda to Sahul, they may have had to travel with humans in boats, as there probably wasn't an easy way to get from continent to continent. But this is just an assumption and hasn't been proven. Once the dingo's ancestors got to Sahul, they probably arrived in the north first, which is the bit called New Guinea today. From there, they spread through large amounts of the continent. It's hard to say exactly when dingoes entered the Australian part of Sahul, it's kind of like putting the ice out on the bench, but this time we have a few more clues. Dingo fossils as old as 3,500 years have been found in Australia, so we know for sure that dingoes arrived in Australia before then. Although it is really hard to find fossils in some biomes because they don't get preserved very well, so dingoes probably arrived in Australia even earlier. Another big clue is Tasmania. Tasmania is an island off the south coast of mainland Australia. No dingo fossils have ever been found there. We know that Tasmania became an island only about 12,000 years ago. So if no dingoes have ever lived in Tasmania, then we know dingoes probably came to Australia after Tasmania was separated as an island. But the only thing it proves for sure is that paleobiology is about making the best guess you can with the evidence that you have. Dingoes have a close relative in nearby New Guinea, the New Guinea singing dog. Dingoes and singing dogs share a mitochondrial DNA mutation that shows that they're closely related, possibly even originating from the same female ancestor. What's really interesting is that if you look at dingoes in Australia today, the ones in the east and the ones in the northwest have some genetic differences from each other. The dingoes in the east seem to be more closely related to the New Guinea singing dog than the dingoes in the northwest are, although they're both very similar. One explanation for this is that the dingoes' ancestors entered the Australian part of Sahul more than once. For example, the first lot of ancestors could have come in and headed west. And then later on, more dingoes came in and headed east. The eastern dingoes continued to play with the New Guinean ones until Sahul was split into New Guinea and Australia, about eight to 10,000 years ago. At this point, the New Guinean canids diverged, becoming the New Guinean singing dogs, and the eastern and western populations of dingoes continued to party together in Australia, staying one species. The oldest dingo remains ever discovered are about three and a half thousand years old, and curiously were found in the south of Australia even though dingoes were thought to have immigrated from the north. This implies that once dingoes got to Australia, they probably spread incredibly quickly through the continent, possibly aided by a commensal relationship with Aboriginal people. 
dingo remains from thousands of years ago show pretty much identical bone morphology to modern day dingoes. This proves that dingoes are an ancient group of canines, not having greatly changed for the last few thousand years. Unlike domestic dogs, dingoes have not been selectively bred. Ever since European colonial contact with Australia, dingoes have been compared to dogs. Scientists have been struggling to agree on how to name dingoes. Many different names for the dingo have been proposed, but recent research suggests that dingoes should be classed within their own species of the Canis genus as Canis dingo, although this is contested by some scientists that believe that dingoes should still be classed within the domestic dog species. Whether you agree that dingoes are a separate species or a subspecies, from analysing their DNA, it's clear that they have their own particular genetic pool. Or at least, they did. For the last few hundred years, many dingoes have been interbreeding with domestic dogs and feral dogs. This problem is so pronounced that it's estimated that less than half of Australia's wild canids are pure dingoes. This research conducted in 2011 shows that pure dingoes are found in highest concentration in the north and centre of the country, where around 88% of wild canids are pure dingoes, while almost none are found in the southeast, where only 1% of wild canids are pure dingoes. But is it really a problem that dingoes are breeding with dogs? Well, yes, and there are a few reasons. Firstly, dingoes are an apex predator. In fact, they are the terrestrial apex predator on mainland Australia. Apex predators provide an important population control on other animals, which subsequently affect the surrounding environment. For example, Australia has a veritable plague of rabbits, of which dingoes are a great predator. Rabbits negatively impact native environments in Australia, so controlling them is very helpful. But it's not only rabbits that dingoes hunt, it's also feral cats and foxes which pose a tremendous threat to smaller native mammals, such as bilbies. But dingoes eat bilbies too, you say? Well, yes, they can, but they've been doing so for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, and presumably reached a good equilibrium whereby bilbies don't become extinct. By breeding dingoes with domestic dogs, it's possible that they lose the equilibrium they've established with the Australian environment and start causing more harm than good. Another reason to protect the dingo from breeding with wild or domestic dogs is that it makes it much easier to protect the dingo from being hunted or culled. Currently in many areas of Australia, it's legal to kill wild dogs, while dingoes are often protected as native species. However, dingoes that crossbreed with dogs may no longer be protected by these laws. This has recently become the case in the state of Western Australia where under proposed new legislation, dingoes are considered to be wild dogs rather than native animals due to the level of crossbreeding and so are not protected as native wildlife. The story of dingoes in Australia creates as many questions as it answers. No one knows exactly how or when dingoes arrive, but we can make a good guess. But regardless of what happened thousands of years ago, dingoes are worth protecting today. They're Australia's top terrestrial predator and are a special kind of canid. Make sure you click that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.